we're going to look at ionic compounds first. When metals bond with nonmetals, they transfer electrons, and then you end up with the metal becoming a cation, metal becoming a cation, the nonmetal becomes an anion. The cation has a positive charge, the anion has a negative charge, and now they are attracted to each other, like magnets, except it's electrical. But they're attracted to each other, and they go click, and they stick together. That's how I think of it. So in Lewis theory, we represent this by moving electrons from the metal to the nonmetal. And this is a good illustration because, like I mentioned before, these, these atoms can't just go to an electron bank and take out electrons when they want extras. They can't donate unwanted electrons to the pound or leave them by the side of the road. They have to be given to another atom. So let's look at um, potassium and chlorine and see what happens. Well, we need to start with the Lewis structures for the atoms. What's the element symbol for potassium? K. So K, and how many valence electrons does potassium have? Has one. And chlorine is Cl, and how many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, we talked about atoms wanting to get eight valence electrons. It's, it's a stable configuration, right? So chlorine has seven. It would like one more. It's like, hey, man, could you give me an electron? I just feel so much better if I could have just one more electron, please. Right? Begging for electrons. And here's this potassium thinking, man, I've got this extra electron on the outside of me. If I could get rid of that one underneath, I've got this beautiful full layer of electrons, right? I'm just trying to ditch this one electron, but I have to find somebody to give it to. And the chlorine's like, me, 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 right? I'll take it. And so that's what happens. This electron goes away and is given to chlorine. But now, Potassium is not a neutral atom anymore. It has lost one of its negatively charged electrons. Its number of protons is the same, so now it has a charge. It has a charge of plus one. How about the chlorine? Is it still a neutral atom? No, it gained one electron, one negative charge. So now it's got an extra negative charge. So now it's chloride, the ion. Now, we typically put brackets around these anions, I think because that negative sign can get kind of lost in all the dots. And so what we usually do is we put brackets around the dots and put the charge on the outside. But that's how potassium chloride is formed. Potassium transfers, gives. Here, you take it, it's yours, you can go do whatever you want with it. Chloride takes it. After chloride takes it, we've got a positive charge and a negative charge, and now these guys become very attractive to each other, and they're going to stick together. Any questions? The chloride now has an octet. Potassium lost its valence electron. When we look at what I drew, it's like, well, how's he happy? He's got nothing. Well, no, he's got the next layer down, OK? He's got the next layer down. So he has an octet in the previous shell. OK, well, why don't we draw all those dots? That would get very confusing. When we draw Lewis structures, we're only looking at valence electrons. And so however many electrons you start with, you end up with. And we're not going to have core electrons suddenly showing up. Um, we usually write the brackets for the anions now. In mastering chemistry, they haven't figured out how to do the brackets in there yet. So they want you to show the charge, but do not text me and ask me where the bracket button is. There's no bracket button. It's dumb, I know, but that's how it is. So you've been warned. Let's write the Lewis structure for the compound NABR. Well, what's the element symbol? I'm sorry, they're given, duh. We've got Na, we've got Br. How many valence electrons does sodium have? 
One. So one dot. How many does bromine have? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I am drawing these inten intentionally so the, this, these guys are next to each other. So when these form a compound, this electron moves over here. In fact, let's make this a different color. Make this one red. So when it moves over, what we have then is that electron over here now. That electron came from sodium. Now we have charges on these. This is a plus charge. This is a minus charge. And we're going to put a bracket around all those dots. It's a negative one overall. Any questions? Lewis theory helps us to predict um, the formulas for compounds. Let's look at barium fluoride. So barium, um, and he has, whoops, he has two valence electrons. And then we've got fluorine. Fluorine has how many valence electrons? Seven. Well, so if barium and fluorine are meeting up to swap electrons and, and you know, get more stable, barium's trying to get rid of two valence electrons. Fluoride is trying to get one. So the barium's like, hey, I've got two valence electrons I need to ditch. Will you take them? And the fluorine's like, well, I could take one for you, but I don't have room for two. I really, really don't need two. I only need the one. Well, OK, that's better than nothing, right? So this electron gets moved over to the fluorine. That gives fluorine a negative one charge. What's the charge on the barium right now? Well, it lost an electron, positive one. Is the fluorine happy? Does it have eight dots? It does. Is the barium happy? Mm. No. So he's going to keep trying to get rid of that other electron. Well, where there's one fluorine atom, there's probably more fluorine atoms. So, oh, look, here's another fluorine atom. And this fluorine atom also has seven valence electrons, because all fluorine atoms have seven valence, valence electrons. And so the barium just did this transaction with this fluoride, but he's still got this extra electron. Hey, hey, you over there, would you take this electron for me? Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. So barium gets rid of that electron and gives it to the fluorine. Oh, oh look at that, isn't that cool? And so now this has a negative one charge, right? It got an extra electron. Is this fluorine happy? Yeah. Yeah. Is barium happy? Yeah. He got rid of those. But what happened to his charge? Actually, it went, it got larger, it got two plus. It's hard to remember that when you're subtracting electrons, you're adding charges and vice versa. And so this formula which we learn to write by crisscrossing charges, there's a reason behind it. The barium had two electrons to get rid of. Each fluorine could only take one. But now we have a negative one charge and a negative one charge, and they are attracted to that positive two charge, and together they're electrically neutral. Questions? Use Lewis theory to predict the formula of the compound that forms between magnesium and nitrogen. Now, we learned how to do this by just looking at the periodic table, predictable charges, crisscrossing, all that stuff. We're going to use Lewis theory to show what happens. Well, we've got magnesium. So here's magnesium. How many valence electrons does magnesium have? Two. And we've got nitrogen. How many valence electrons does nitrogen have? Five. five. Group five. One, two, three, 
four, five. So what's going to go on here? Magnesium's trying to get rid of electrons. Nitrogen's trying to get electrons. And so the magnesium's like, hey, hey, I need to get rid of these two electrons. The nitrogen's like, oh, awesome. I want three, though. Well, I only have two. Will you take the two? Well, sure, that's better than nothing. I'll take your two electrons. So these two electrons get moved over to the nitrogen. Now, what's the charge in the magnesium? Two. two plus. What charge do we have on the nitrogen right now? Negative two. Because, see those red electrons? It got two electrons from the magnesium. Is the magnesium happy? Yeah. Is the nitrogen happy? No. Nope. What's he going to do? He's going to look for more electrons. Well, there was one magnesium atom. There's probably another one, right? So here's another magnesium atom. And he's got two electrons. And so this nitrogen, do you mind me talking like I'm an element? Does that bother you? OK, good. So here's the nitrogen. Oh, man, well, I got those two. That's really nice, but I just need one more. Hey, hey, I need to get rid of two. Will you take two? No, I can only take one. Well, OK. <laughs> the, the funny thing is I can do this with atoms. I could never do this with cars. When my kids wanted to play cars, I could not talk like this with cars. <laughs> could not. Still can't. But now the charge is 3 minus, right? And here we have magnesium with a plus 1 charge. Now, this first magnesium was happy. He's still happy. This nitrogen is happy. Is this magnesium happy? No. So what might be lurking around? Another nitrogen atom. You're getting a, the picture here. So here's another nitrogen atom. How many valence electrons? Five. One, two, three, four, five. So magnesium's like, hey, hey, you, you look like you could use another electron. Oh, sure, I'll take your electron. Okay. So we move that one. I'm really getting a little dizzy with all this color changing business. And so this is 2 plus. What's the charge on this nitrogen? Minus 1. Because it has one extra electron. That's why I'm changing the colors. This magnesium's happy. Is this nitrogen happy? No. Do you feel like this could go on all day long? This is like my grandma with her bread and with it. She'd take some jam, and she'd take some bread, and then she'd eat all the bread, but there was jam left. So then she had to take another piece of bread. And so she'd put jam on the bread, but now there wasn't quite enough jam, so she'd take more jam. She could do that all night long. She was a rather large woman. She enjoyed her food. <laughs> but bread and with it, that's what I think of when I think of this. Well, what do we need? Two more. We need two more electrons. We need another magnesium atom. So here's another magnesium atom trying to get rid of two electrons. And how many does this nitrogen need? It needs two. Oh, good, we finally got to the bottom of this. So we'll move that one and this one and give them to this nitrogen. What's the charge on the nitrogen now? Three minus. Three minus. And what's the charge on the magnesium? Two plus. So magnesium's got rid of electrons. Nitrogen's took electrons. When that happens, you form ions. But the, the charges will always add up to zero because all of the electrons are still there. And we can see from this there's two nitrogens and three magnesiums. So the formula, which is what they're asking us for, is going to be Mg3N2, which we learned to do before by looking at the charges, Mg2+. plus. N3 minus, and we would do the crisscross thing. But this is what's going on behind. This is why that works. Any questions? I think this is really cool stuff.